Hi, this is Mr. Payton. Welcome to the Science of Everything, episode 13. The person I'm going to talk to you about is named Stephanie Kowalik. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing her last name correctly, but that's the way it looks. How many of you play first-person shooter games? Maybe, let me guess, Black Ops, Call of Duty, any of those games? I'm not a gamer, as you can tell by the way I'm saying the names. How about this? How many of you have a relative that was, that has served in the military? How many of you have a loved one that is in the business of protection, like the police department or the FBI? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then Stephanie Kowalik has probably saved their lives a million times over. Stephanie Kowalik was a Polish-American chemist, and she worked for a company called DuPont. Now, being a chemist and having some engineering background, she discovered a, a compound that had exceptional strength and stiffness. And when she used these fibers, she ended up inventing something called Kevlar. Now, for those of you who game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who understand the military and the police, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know what Kevlar is, it is the material that is used in bulletproof vests. Now, I'm sure at this point, they've probably innovated some new materials, but the point is, is that she was the pioneer in this type of technology. Now, if you have someone in these fields that I discussed earlier, you know the significance of this discovery. But what I want you to consider is during this time, back in the, you know, 70s and 80s, as tough as you think it is now, it was even tougher back then for a female in the area of science to be recognized. For this young lady to come up with this type of discovery and something that would impact so many people so many years later is unfathomable. And so in 1980, she was recognized as the chemical or with the Chemical Pioneer Award. So her peers were forced to recognize her contribution. And this goes out to many of the young ladies who may watch this or may hear about this from one of their friends. I'm sure that if you're into science or engineering or any type of technology, you may feel like, wow, there's not enough people in the field. And it is definitely improving. There's no doubt about it. But I want you to think about someone like Stephanie Kolick, who wouldn't allow that to be the reason why she didn't seek excellence. She wouldn't allow that to be the reason why she couldn't contribute to the world. This is the point of me sharing these types of leaders, innovators, explorers, historians, scientists, is to hopefully inspire people, to hopefully give context to the reason why it is so important to support young women in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM. Why it's so important for me as a father of a daughter to expose my daughter to a number of different things. That's not to say I don't want her to play with dolls or do any of those kinds of things, but I also want her to be exposed to science. I want her to understand math. I want to make sure that she knows how to speak up for herself. To me, I'm raising an individual. She just happens to be a young lady. Hopefully, Stephanie Kowalik gives you some inspiration. Hopefully, these people, these individuals, these pioneers that I'm sharing with you gives you some context and some inspiration. I hope that as I continue to do the science of everything and try to share information with you in the areas of science and history, that you at least broaden your horizons in terms of what's possible. You may not become a historian or a scientist, but maybe it will spark a different idea for you 
in terms of career or in terms of things that you're passionate about. I hope you enjoyed this information and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.